Guys, guess what day it is? It's Christmas. It's St. Patrick's Day. So I'm gonna teach you how to make a St. Patrick's Day mega cake. I think I was subtle. I think I just subtly threw in a little. Uh, some touches of green. Yeah, no. touches, yeah. It's very, very, very nice. Yeah. yeah. I want this cake to be an ombre of green inside, so I've divided my batter in three, and then I'm gonna dye each one a different shade of green. So a light and a medium and a darker green. I'm actually doing this the old school way, because I wanted my green to have the same tones, so I didn't wanna use different food colorings. And I'm going to add blue and yellow, which make green. Doesn't everybody know this? Yeah. The primary colors make all the secondary colors. So I made my first cake, yellow drops, blue drops, and stirred. And I really liked the color, but I've decided I want my lightest cake to be lighter than this. So then I take my second bowl and do the same thing, but I add less drops of food coloring so that I'll get a lighter shade of the screen. And then finally, with my third bowl, same thing, but more drops of food coloring so that it's darker. You don't wanna stir it too vigorously because we don't wanna overwork the eggs in the batter. You wanna fold it in, but you do need to make sure it's fully incorporated, otherwise you will see streaks even after it's baked. Once you're happy with the color of your batter, pour each one into a separate eight inch round prepared pan and bake them. Oh yeah, or six inch or four inch, make whatever size cake you wanna make. Or 12 inch, or 20 inch, One. or 30. Imagine they don't make 30 inch cake pans, or not. I like to tell like your gangster lean. You see that? I'm like, they don't have 30 inch cake pans, foo! <laughs> like, <laughs> you see me? <laughs> what you talking about, Orhan? So after you level your cakes and reveal that gorgeous color, you'll want to cut away the caramelization from the bottom of each cake, and then we're gonna layer each cake into two. We also need to address the caramelization at the sides of each cake. And the way I like to cut this away is I'm gonna use a seven inch round cake pan and I'm gonna flip it upside down on top of the cake. Use a small serrated knife and cut around. Use the pan as a guide. Now I have six beautiful layers of green cake. It is time to simple syrup them with the help of Sir Squeeze. I asked him to dress up for St. Patrick's Day and he refused. He refused to wear anything green. He just said, that's not really my color. Are you not supposed to punch people in the shoulder if they're not wearing something green? I don't know. Is that what you do in Turkey? I don't know. Yeah. Guys, do you know? what? What is this a St. Patrick's Day tradition? If they're not wearing green today, do you punch them in the shoulder? Leave a comment below. Nobody's punching me. Okay, it's time to cut secret chambers out of four of the layers of my cake. So I'm using a two and a quarter inch circle cutter to cut my secret chambers out of the cake. I always use a ruler to measure and make sure it's centered. And then I like to use the first layer I cut the chamber out of as a guide to cut the chambers out of the other three. So I'm gonna cut a secret chamber out of the two lightest and the two middle layers. It's time to fill and stack this cake with Italian meringue buttercream. I'm not coloring my buttercream green on the inside of the cake because I think the white buttercream is a nice break and you'll see the ombre so much better. So to fill and stack, first I lay down the darkest layer that has no secret chamber. I'm gonna use that same circle cutter to protect the center. I don't want any buttercream in my chamber. So I lay the circle cutter down and then I dollop my Italian meringue buttercream around it and spread it with a small offset spatula. Then I pull off the circle cutter and now I'm gonna lay down my mid shade green with a secret chamber, put the cutter back, spread buttercream, and then I'm going to do the same thing now with my lightest shade of cake. And as I build up, I'm gonna reverse. So it's like dark, medium, light, light, medium, dark. So the ombre is going like dark to light from mm. top to bottom. I just decided I wanted to do that. Good, good for you. Thank you. Now we fill and stack the cake up to the top, except for the top layer, the dark green layer with no chamber, because we need to fill the chamber. I didn't make a chamber to put nothing in it. It's time to fill it with gold. So I remembered when I was a kid, there was this gum. I think it's called Gold Rush, or it, it's basically little gold nuggets that are gum. And I specifically remember them being gold. This goes to show you the mind of a child. 
So I found them at a local bulk store and opened it up. They're not gold, they're yellow. They're definitely yellow. So I had to deal with this and I had to paint them gold myself. Once they were fully coated in gold, I then shook them out onto a baking tray with a silk hat to dry. And as a backup, I also had some yellow rock candy that was cut off the sticks. So I'm going to paint that as well, the same way in a bowl, a little gold paint, swirl it around and dry it on a baking tray. Now my gum is definitely dry, so I'm going to fill the secret chamber with gold. And once it's completely filled to the brim, I'm going to place on the dark cake layer. And now I'm gonna crumb coat the entire cake with the excess Italian meringue buttercream that's sort of hanging out the sides of the layers and chill. My cake is chilling, and I know that I wanna ice this cake in an ombre of green Italian meringue buttercream. So just like I colored the batter before, I'm going to color my buttercream. This time I'm not gonna use uh, yellow and blue, but you could, I'm gonna use some green food coloring that I have. So in this case, I just keep adding green food coloring and stirring it into the buttercream until I'm happy with the color. I'm making the darkest green color first. And then in order to make the ombre, instead of guessing and coloring my other three bowls, just take a little dollop of the green and add it to the next bowl until it's lighter, but I can differentiate it from the first dark green. And then I'll add a dollop to the third bowl, making it even lighter, and the fourth bowl, making it the lightest. So I have four lovely shades of green. By the way, if you haven't signed up for my Italian meringue buttercream live stream tutorial, you only have 24 hours left. Learn how to make the perfect Italian meringue buttercream with me as I guide you through it live and answer all of your questions. There's a link below. Now that I'm happy with my colors, I'm going to place each color of buttercream into its own piping bag. I'm gonna use a ruler and a knife to divide my cake in sections. I'm not physically cutting it, I'm just using the knife to mark it. Now I'm going to pipe my four colors of buttercream between those lines. So first I pipe the darkest color in the bottom section, then the second color, the section above, the third, the fourth, you get it. So it's going from darkest to lightest. Before I use my bench scraper, which is key in a cake like this, I'm gonna use a small offset spatula to slightly smooth each section. The tricky thing is you don't want to cross colored buttercream contamination here. So every time you smooth a section, just wipe off your spatula and smooth another section. And now we're ready to use the bench scraper. Just like any other cake, we're gonna bench scrape the entire way around while turning our Lazy Susan. And every time you take it away, you, you wanna scrape the buttercream off the bench scraper and come back. No cross buttercream color contamination. Cross color buttercream. Yeah, no cross color buttercream contamination. No. CCBC. Oh, thank you, CCBC. We wanna avoid the CCBC. So now I'm gonna chill the cake again before I apply all of my green decorations. I have so many green decorations. The cake is chilled and I'm going to use some cake drip. It's actually, I've never used this before, but I like it. So it's kind of like a green ganache, but in a squeezy bottle. And all you have to do is just warm it up slightly in the microwave, shake it, put the lid back on, and then you can just squeeze it along the side and control the drips where you want them to be, how heavy you want them to be. And then you just fill in the top with more cake drip and smooth it with your spatula. And now I'm going to decorate. So I've created a template, surprise so that I can mark out where I want all my six slits to go. And then I'm gonna glue my six slits on with a little more cake drip and I'm alternating colors. So first I did all the dark six slits and then I'm putting the brighter, more lime green in between. Wow. A six slit is like a drage. Yeah. Mm. So it's like a, ball, a chocolate ball that's candy coated and they sell it in all these different colors. What's a six slit? I just explained it. Did I not just explain it? I'm going to move this cake onto a green cake stand. And I'm just gonna fill in the space between the cake and the border of the cake stand. I'm gonna scoop on some green sprinkles and some green rock candy. Next, I wanna add some dragées just randomly along the side of the cake. So I'm adding sort of a medium-sized lime green dragée. I'm just placing it here and there. It's very hard for me to be random. I just naturally want to go in a line. And because this cake is iced, 
in an ombre, there are lines, and I can't tell you <laughs> what it takes for me not to follow the line. So I'm doing this randomly, and then I'm adding some smaller, they're very light green pearl dragées. I thought I'd be able to throw them on, which you normally can, but the buttercream on the side was just a little too chilled, so they were just falling down. So I have to place those on randomly by hand. I feel like life is forcing me to learn. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I've decided to create like a little toppled over pot of gold for the top of this cake. So I blew up a couple of mini balloons and then I melted my black candy melts. And now what you need to do is dip your balloon into the black chocolate until it's at least halfway up. And then carefully let the excess drip off and put it onto a sill pad to set. I'm gonna make two just in case. When your chocolate is fully set, you just simply take a pin Pop the balloon inside and you'll see it like retract into the bowl and then you've got to carefully peel it away from the bowl and it lets go. So I'm going to ice on a little bit more black chocolate and glue it onto the top center of my cake. And then I want to fill the pot with, you know what I want to fill it with, don't you? Gold. So I take the spoon and I just spoon in my gold nuggets into the pot and falling on top of the cake. I then decided I wanted my pot to have handles. So I piped a whole bunch of handles, let them set, and then I picked the two nicest handles and piped on a little dot of chocolate on the back, picked them up very carefully and glued them to the pot. You always wanna glue chocolate to chocolate with chocolate. And we're almost done, but you know what this cake does not have? Four subscribers. Yes, you're right, Orhan. In order to finish this cake, I need more subscribers. If this is your first time here, welcome. I know I have a lot of explaining to do. Just watch some more episodes and you'll understand. This was actually quite calm, I feel. And now I'm gonna put some clovers on this cake. St. Patrick's Day. Hello. So then what I did is I, I made myself a clover template. I just cut it out of paper and then I laid that on top of my fondant and cut out that shape. And I wanna give them a bit of life, so I'm gonna dry them in some, uh, some flour drying cups just to give them some shape, they're not flat. And before I put them on the cake, I've decided they need some shimmer. There's a lot of gold going on, right? I can't put flat green clovers on this cake. Sure, so thingy is shiny. My thingy, yeah. yes, this thingy is very shiny. Also known as a bow. Yeah, well, it's a bow. Yeah. And so what I'm gonna do is paint these clovers by mixing together some green color dust and a little bit of green luster dust, and then just paint the surface of each clover and let it dry. And now I can place it here and there on the cake. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Imagine a slice of this cake with your green beer. Now that's a celebration. If you need more cake, click here and here. I'll be back next Tuesday. What are you gonna do with this cake? Um, I don't know, it's getting heavy. I'm gonna put it down.